Franco does an excellent job of saying that. Oh, dude, shit. I just got an email back from BetterHelp. Yeah? What's it say? Oh, guess what they did. Just guess. What'd they do? Take a guess. What'd they do, Andy? Take a guess. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And I'm here with my amazing mother once again, Dr. Carrie Randazzo. Say hi mom. Hi everybody. All right, so this is a video to kind of follow up on the BetterHelp scam slash scandal. My mom doesn't know much about BetterHelp, but my mom has been a professional psychologist. She's been in the industry for 20 years. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to take this video and talk about one specific gripe that people have with better help and this is gonna be fun because my mom and I are gonna do a little bit of a role play see we have an amazing relationship so I hope she doesn't get too mad or slap me in the face but I'm gonna take on the role of one of the people on the internet who is positive that better help is just the worst thing on earth and how they deal with people they also said in the terms of service that if you're dealing with something severe, not to use the service. So if you are suicidal, don't use the service. <laughs> That's what it said. My mom has been in the industry, right? And uh, one of the biggest gripes people have with BetterHelp is that BetterHelp turns away people who are suicidal. Now, um, real quick, I just want to make this clear. Um, this, this is a serious subject. Uh, my mom and I have dealt with suicide and overdose and death for many, many years. Um, one way that my mom, we were just talking about this outside, is like, there's, we, we bring some lightheartedness to a serious subject. Right. Right? Well, because then you'd be totally depressed if you had to sit in all the stuff we have yeah, to do. Yeah, so there's no disrespect, you know. Um, but anyways, I, I just want to talk to her about this and get her opinions on it. So, so mom, so basically I was, I was on a live stream and one of the guys, he emailed BetterHelp, right? And you go through an evaluation, okay? You email this app and they link you up with a, a licensed therapist and he emailed and they, they do this assessment and they say that they're suicidal. Okay. Okay. They don't turn them away. They give them resources, right? So in the email response that he got, okay, it, it gave him two different links to resources and said, sorry, we're unable to help you. Right. And he replied back like, oh, I'm, well, I'm going to go jump off a bridge now. Reply. No. Wait, so what's the I problem with that email? I am just going to end my life. There. You see? Now this, whoever f wrote this, it's going to feel like, oh, right okay like in your experience like what what is the best thing that they could do okay no let's start here who is who is the best person to work with somebody who is suicidal well licensed professionals right right but what yeah. do you mean like I, th I think we have to go what happens when someone's suicidal in a licensed professional's office Okay. So let's, say somebody, you came into my office suicidal. Okay, let's start well, there. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so I don't want to get into the details of what we do professionally, but we ask you if you are, and then we want to know a plan. Now, by law, yes, we have got to, we do what we call a 5150 hold, but we cannot do it as licensed professionals. So if you we have, have to call the 911. So if you have a therapist office, if you have a therapist office. You come in my office. Yeah. And you say you have a plan, you're suicidal. That is a 911 call. Let's turn this into an educational thing too. Um, how, how do you know as a professional? Because there are a lot of people with mental illnesses where there's attention seeking behavior and things like that. How do you d tell the difference of if somebody is threatening or if they're like really going to do it? First of all, I don't want to talk about that, like the specifics, because that's a professional. I want to stay out of that. Okay. However, if somebody if somebody's saying they're suicidal, that's a red flag right there. That's something to take serious, correct? Yeah. But so, there's things we have to do so, to protect the client from themselves. Yes. So the scope of just for transparency purposes, the scope of what you work in, like what what specific populations do you work with? Addiction only. Addiction only. Okay. So this is this is a big deal. Like addicts, alcoholics, me, somebody like me. We're the type of people, so like, let me paint this scenario. Like, 
we're the type of people where if you force me to go to sober living, if you force me to go to rehab, I'm gonna kill myself as a way to hold that person emotionally hostage. That's kind of what I'm asking you. Like, how do you know if that is a serious threat? Like at that point, do you I call 911? I don't know. So then we keep asking questions. Okay. So then I'm gonna ask you more questions. We're gonna get to if this is really serious at this moment. Okay, As gotcha. a professional. Gotcha, so so right now, the, the scenario we're painting is somebody in your office. Right. Okay, so now, it's 2018, right? Technology is advancing. Right. There's people, like the way I think of like better help is there's people who are in rural communities. There are people who don't have transportation. There are people who cannot physically get to a therapist office, or maybe it's too expensive to, you know, all these other things. So. In this virtual type of world, like what do you think the best thing a company like BetterHelp could do if somebody emailed them like okay, that, that and you. said they were suicidal? Like, because like we let's like my mom and I, we like to live in a world of logic, okay? We like to talk logically. You get a you get an email, you don't know if it's a real person's name, you only have so much of their personal information. Like, what do you do? Well, like, you can't get them help if I don't have their address, their name. I can't do anything, correct? There's mm -hmm. nobody to call because nowhere, I can't send the police over to an, an unknown name, mm -hmm. address, da 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 da, right? Right. So I don't even, and then we don't even know exactly what was in that email and what they said when they gave the links, right? So let me, let's take this a step further too, because. They probably gave them the suicide hotline, I would assume. And all, yeah. And I'll okay. share some of my experience with this too. Like, what in your like in your experience, have you ever called have you ever called the cops saying this person's suicidal? Twice. Twice. In your experience, like, how effective is that? What do they do? Like, what do the cops do when you call them? They and, they sit there and talk to the client and say, You can't, we're gonna we're gonna take you to the hospital to be evaluated because a suicide fifty one fifty hold, a physician's the only one that can keep it or take it off. Yeah. So the police have to take them to a physician. Yeah, so has this happened? Like when you call, did they take them? Okay, yeah. so something that I've experienced personally, cause I've worked with literally thousands of clients, right? Like I worked for a very big facility, my job was keeping in touch with people, and I had people call me, you know, after a relapse or maybe when they were drunk or high, and they said they were suicidal, mm -hmm. right? And I would, I would contact friend, family member, like whoever I had a release of information for, I would contact mom, dad, husband, wife, and say, yo, you need to do something. They are talking about suicide. They would call the police, the police would come over, the police would come over, and this is this is just an issue. Like, I, I'm here to educate you guys about the reality of the situation and why I make videos like this. I've had police go over there, the person says, no, I'm not. Right. I'm not, I'm not suicidal. And what are the cops supposed to do? Nothing, they can leave. Yeah, like they can't legally drag them into a psych ward and keep them they, on hold. They could 50 and 50 them, but then they have no, there's no, the client said I'm not. Yeah. So it's really the police. Yeah, so so like what I'm trying to get at with this is like, a lot of people upset about this, they're thinking very black and white. They're thinking that this is like this, like kind of just scenario, it's very difficult. That's why they're, there are certain difficult. people, there's certain people like us who work in this field. It is hard, it's difficult, it's stressful. You know what I mean? So, you know, better help, in my opinion, by sending them an email with resources, at a certain point, there's only so much they can do. Right. Because they what, didn't have an address, a phone number. Where are they going to send the police? Yeah, where are they going to send the police to? What are they going to gonna do? Right? right? Because uh, a narrative that people are pushing out there is mental health professionals should be able to, like, like what magic words are you going to <laughs> I already know what you're gonna yeah, say. Yeah, what, what magic words is that therapist gonna do to make the person, mm. you know, not? Normally they're 5150 to put them away in a safe place so they cannot harm themselves mm -hmm. until they can stabilize. So yeah. that's what a 5150 hold yeah. is. So like, what do you, what do you think that these people who are outraged about this expect them to do? I, f I think the people that are outraged feel helpless. Yes. Helpless, and they want everyone to be saved. And I understand that. That's scary. But the bottom line is, I wish we could save everybody. Yeah. How, how beautiful and amazing is my mom? Like, yeah, Am I like, amazing and beautiful? Yeah, like yeah. That's, that's something that, you know, even when I went on this dude's live stream, Andy Worski, shout out, like, um, 
Like, I under, they're coming from a good place. Well, they're coming from but, a place of that's scary, that's yeah. sad. People are killing yeah, themselves. Exactly. It's horrible. And that's why I make this channel, to increase awareness, decrease the stigma. And I'm glad, like, no matter what happens at the end of the day, I hope more people understand, like, this is some real stuff. But I think what we can do, whoever's watching your video, when somebody says they're suicidal, take them serious and get them some help. Yes. Like, don't ignore it. Yeah. Take the next step. So... All right, you guys, and I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but usually I edit all my videos. This one, I'm on the road, so, but something I wanna bring up. You and I were talking about borderline personality disorder, and I wanna bring up a very common scenario that has happened where the person is backed into a, uh, a corner. So say a, a man and a woman are dating. Okay. The woman has a borderline personality disorder, and she says, she freaks out and she says, I'm gonna kill myself, mm -hmm. but, don't tell anybody. If you tell anybody, I'm gonna be furious, right? So they're they're putting them, this is something that happens. I don't know why you're looking at me like I'm crazy. No, I'm just, I'm trying to you, think of the they situation. They put that person in a situation where it's lose-lose, right? Like, by the way, these are real scenarios that happen with mental illness. So they say, don't try to help me, right. but I'm also gonna hurt myself. Right. What do you do? What does the person do in that situation? Don't try to help me is not an option. Yeah. I'm going to call somebody. Exactly. Whether you hate me or not, whether you like me or not, yeah, we'll take that up for another day. Yeah, exactly. So if any of you are listening to this, <laughs> sorry like, for your luck. Yeah, like I'm sorry. Like there's a lot of people who say you know people are attention seeking and stuff like that. No, that's take, not our call. Yes, that is not my call. That's not your call. Attention seeking. <laughs> Yeah. Humble it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Exactly. You're not all that in a bag of chips. <laughs> Make the decision. Yeah. So I really wanted to bring my mom on here to just kind of like give you some clarity about this situation. You know, BetterHelp might not be the perfect company. All therapists might not be the perfect therapist. But when we're talking about depression, suicide, these very serious subjects, it is not as simple as you might think it is. But I think, like, let's end this thing on a really positive note. This is why more people need to be educated about signs of depression. They need to be educated about if somebody is suicidal um, and showing the signs, we need to know what to look for. We need to start understanding why more people are depressed than ever before, right? That's what we gotta start looking at. You know, I think there's a lot of misdirected anger, a lot of misdirected outrage, and what we need to start realizing is that people need help, and we need to start figuring that part out. Then we need, don't need to worry so much about the extreme cases of suicide and things like that, you know? So I hope this educated you a little bit. Uh, my mom and I will be down in the comments, but like, if you have questions about this stuff, like make sure you leave it down there. We will try to answer you. But I do wanna make some more videos because like we were saying, like suicide is a very serious topic. Um, let me ask you this, mom, before we finish. Have you had anybody in your life, not getting specifics, but numbers wise, anybody in your life, whether friend, family, clients, suicide, like, how many in your experience, in your life? That actually follow through? Yeah. And I think in business, probably about 15 that I know. 15, 15. That were no longer being treated, but then I found out they committed mm. suicide because of their disease. Right, so 15, me, my mom's been in the business for 20 years. For me, I've been in the business for three years and it's about the same, you know, so but we- But there are a lot. I mean, look at the famous people. So I'm just saying, if somebody says it, take it serious. Mm -hmm. And there's a suicide 800 number hotline. Yeah, so by Add the way, number. <laughs> to, to end this video, I'm gonna put resources down in the description below. Um, I'm based in the United States, so I'm gonna put United States numbers. If any of you in the comments are from other countries and you know of other resources, put them in the comments and I'll try to update the description and everything. But anyways, uh, that's all I got. I will be keeping up and following up with uh, the better help stuff too to hopefully educate people about mental health from the professional end of it and stuff like that. Anyways, thank you again, Mom. This is our third video in a row that we recorded. So just because of that, make sure you subscribe. Tell my mom in the comments to do more videos with me. Come out to Las Vegas. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. Ring the notification bell. And we'll see you next time. Say bye, Mom. Bye. <laughs>